everyone welcome to the sessions on neuroanatomy today we are going to develop the concept of the meninges and particularly we are going to talk about its layer which is the dura mater so what are meninges meninges are actually the three layered membrane structures which closely invest our brain brain stem and the spinal cord so the three layers are dura mater arachnoid matter and the pia matter these three layers are present throughout investing the brain brain stem and the spinal cord protecting these vital structures apart from the few differences at different levels Let's have a look at the three layers of the meninges and their arrangement if we imagine the coronal section of the brain. So let's say this is the outermost layer when we do the coronal sectioning of the brain which becomes the scalp layer. Just deep to the scalp we have the skull bones. So let's say this is the skull bone. beneath the skull bone before we encounter the cerebral hemispheres we notice three membrane structures which closely invest the brain in the arrangement of dab dura arachnoid and pia these three layers form the meninges of the brain uh, so if in the coronal section these are the two cerebral hemispheres with the sulci and gyri the dura mater actually forms the outermost layer of the meninges and at the level of the brain the dura mater has two components the outer one just beneath the skull is the periosteal layer the one that i'm highlighting at the moment is the periosteal layer of the dura deep to it there is second component of the dura closely present to it apart from certain instances where the gap between the two layers of the dura become more obvious in a form of a sinus these areas they are the site they are the sites of dural venous sinuses because they are filled with the venous blood in this instance we are looking at the superior sagittal sinus so this second layer of the dura becomes the meningeal layer just deep to the dura the second layer of meninges that we can appreciate is a thin impermeable structure which is known as the arachnoid matter this arachnoid matter is the layer which has the important vessels and veins passing and going to the brain uh, the importance of the arachnoid layer is that at instances of the dural venous sinuses they send projections into these sinuses in a form of arachnoid villi ag aggregates of which become the arachnoid granulations now these arachnoid villi and the arachnoid granulations they are the important sites of absorption of the csf so in the constant flow and maintenance of the csf pressure these arachnoid villi are important to absorb the excess of the csf deep to the arachnoid matter the third layer is the pia matter and this is the layer which is very closely adhering adhering to the surface or the structure of the cerebral hemispheres and especially in the areas of the sulci and gyri where it dips inside this pia matter is the vascular layer and it is important especially in the roof of the third and the fourth ventricles in this video our prime focus is on the dura mater so what is dura mater as we have seen at the level of the brain the dura mater consists of two layers the periosteal layer and the meningeal layer, meningeal layer which are separated widely at the level of the dural venous sinuses 
the periosteal layer of the dura actually is known as the periosteal layer because it forms the periosteum of the skull this layer at the level of the foramen magnum it is not continued into the spinal cord instead it reflects onto the outer side of the skull and it becomes continuous with the periosteum of the skull bone so this layer of dura mater is not appreciated in the area of the spinal cord and it does not invest to the spinal cord on the other hand this meningeal layer this is the layer which invests both the brain and the spinal cord and this is the reason this layer is also known as the dura mater proper so the meningeal layer is known as the dura mater proper other name for the periosteal layer is the endosteum this layer is adherent at the sides of the sutures of the skull bones also at the base of the skull however the meningeal layer investing our brain and spinal cord is important because it is the true dura mater and this layer sends leaves to the cranial nerves which exit the brain area for the concept of the dural venous sinuses i will request you to go through the video which i have shared in the description section just a brief intro is that these are actually the venous blood filled sinuses which are found between the two layers of the dura that is the periosteal layer and the meningeal layer and some examples are the superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus superior inferior petrosal sinus etc the next concept that we need to develop today which is the important one is the concept of the septals formed by the meningeal meningeal layer of the dura there are four septals of the meningeal layer of the dura that we can appreciate at the level of the brain these four septals are named as fox cerebri fox cerebelli tentorium cerebelli and the diaphragma cellae these all structures are named because of their locations the fox cerebri is the septa like extent of the meningeal layer which is found between the two cerebral hemispheres this becomes the septa between the two lobes of the cerebellum this present this is present between the cerebellum and the cerebral hemispheres and this house is the hypophyseal fossa so let's have a look at the picture to develop the detailed concept in this picture we can appreciate the thin septa like structures which are present between the two cerebral hemispheres these are identified as the fox cerebri so this one is the first septa that we need to imagine this is the fox cerebri the second one septa is present between the two lobes of the cerebellum and this is the fox cerebelli the third one is present between the occipital lobes of the cerebrum and the cerebellum in a form of a tent and we name it as tentorium cerebelli this is the third septa of the meningealia and lastly the fourth septa which we cannot appreciate in this view is the diaphragma cellae which forms a roof over the hypophyseal fossa one septa formed by the meningeal layer is the fox cerebri in the coronal section we can imagine this septa between the two cerebral hemispheres however when we look at the septa on the side view this sickle shaped fold of dura is the fox cerebri extending from the frontal crest crista gilae all the way back to where the to the level of the internal occipital protuberance where it gets attached to the upper border of the tentorium cerebelli so these are the attachments of the fox cerebri the important dural venous sinuses in relation to this fox cerebri are the superior sagittal sinus which run along its upper border inferior sagittal sinus which run along its lower border and the straight sinus which is present where fox cerebri gets attached to the tentorium cerebelli the second 
fold of the dura mater is this fox cerebelli which is present between the two cerebellar hemispheres on the side view this small fold of the dura adjacent to the or attached to the occipital bone is the fox cerebelli and the sinus which is in relation with this fox is the occipital sinus running from the foramen magnum all the way to the confluence of the sinuses the third important fold of the dura mater is the temptorium cerebelli this fold of the dura mater as we can see here actually separate the occipital lobe of the cerebral hemispheres with the cerebellum and it is attached in a fashion that it has two borders the inner free borders and the outer attached borders the attachments of tentorium cerebelli are the outer attached border is attached and this border is known as a fixed border because it is attached to the bones and it is attached to the occipital bone particularly the area of the transverse groove then it gets attached to the petrous part of the temporal bone and from here it gets attached to the posterior clinoid processes the inner free border is called free border because it is not attached to any bony part here except for the area of the anterior clinoid processes anteriorly the two borders overlap each other and at the side where they overlap the cranial nerves exit and enter the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus this is the another view where we can imagine the tentorium cerebelli with its inner free border and the outer attached border and we can also see that the fox cerebri is attached to its upper margin and fox cerebelli will be attached to its lower aspect the fourth septa of the meningeal ear is the diaphragma cellae which is present in this area of the hypophyseal fossa it has a small opening here which is meant for the passage of the pituitary stalk so just to quickly enumerate the septas of the meningeal ear of the dura at the level of the brain are the fox cerebri fox cerebri fox cerebelli tentorium cerebelli and the diaphragma cellae these septations are important because they protect our brain and they prevent the unnecessary movements and rotations of the important areas of the brain especially when there is rapid acceleration and deceleration